good afternoon sir yes good afternoon yes good afternoon can we start the program sir yes we can i'm ready thank you thank you very much for joining uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to uh, the celebration of international yoga day 2022 Uh, thank you for joining uh, professor yoganand and uh, on behalf of all the participants management and the department i would like to extend my heartiest welcome to dr yoganand andiyappan director and founder anahata yoga studio hong kong thank you sir thank you for joining and uh, before we start the program i would like to give a small introduction uh, about uh, dr yoganand uh, june 21 is observed as international yoga day around the world the topic of this year's yoga day is yoga for humanity which focuses on how yoga helps people in achieving holistic health the theme also depicts how yoga has helped humanity during the peak of the covid pandemic by easing suffering to throw a new light on this topic we have a renowned expert today with us dr yoganand andiyappan director and founder anahata yoga studio hong kong a uh, son of india's famous yoga guru dr asana andiyappan uh, dr yoganand has started learning yoga at the early age of 2 well qualified in the field of yoga and he had completed two diplomas yoga and neuropathy yogic science and education a bachelor and master of science in yoga and naturopathy he has also completed a phd degree in the effects of yoga therapy and natural yogic diet on cancer patients with the physical education and sports university in india conducted residential and non residential yoga teacher training courses and trainers trained thousands of yoga teachers in india hong kong canada australia malaysia singapore korea taiwan thailand china france spain and other countries and have given yoga lecture demonstrations across different <laughs> excuse me different universities in india <coughs> and yoga studios abroad he is the director and founder of anahata yoga studio hong kong honorary professor at zengzhou normal university zengzhou china director founder and yoga consultant international yoga academy hong kong founder and chief editor of asana international yoga journal chennai india president of asana andiyappan college of yoga and research center chennai tamil nadu india <laughs> also he is a regional coordinator and interviewed and recruited yoga masters for the company developed a new yoga classes and programs and trained newly recruited yoga teachers sales and management staff of the new yoga programs assisted the management team in setting up new yoga studios in hong kong singapore taiwan and china felicitated workshops and yoga conferences he is a yoga master at planet yoga hong kong apart from this training sessions he has authored three books yoga for students health yoga from the heart andipan yoga uh, pavana muktasana thank you sir thank you joe very much and your resume is has no end so i am extremely sorry and please excuse us we are not able to read out your resume thank you for joining once again and today's topic of his delivery is yoga for humanity now i would like to request dr yoganand to take over the session please sir thank you very much thank you very much madam and you have done a fantastic job in giving all the background information about my yoga journey and uh, today it's a privilege and honor to be uh, giving this lecture to the srn group of uh, you know universities and uh, uh, a lot of uh, the staff of srm and uh, even students of srm have studied uh, with my father's college and school in back in india chennai so i'm very much uh, honored to be here today and giving you this lecture from hong kong which is now my base country and uh, today's topic is yoga for humanity so certainly if one art that is a gift from india that is offered to all the you know the humanity is basically yoga and uh, especially i come from south india i speak pure tamil and uh, my father dr asana andiyappan has researched 
a textbook or a text, a, a literature text called Tirumandiram. And in Tirumandiram, he found out that yoga helps heal many physical and mental ailments in our body. Uh, Tirumular himself has uh, codified in an aphorism saying that Udambai Munnam Ilukendirundem, Udambar Aliyil Uyirar Aliyivar, Titambada Meinyanam Seravu Matta, Udambai Valarthen Uyir Valarthenen, Udambai Ombu Indrene. As a yogi himself, as a Siddha himself, he thinks his body was a hindrance to his spiritual journey. So he wanted to advance his spiritual journey in the yogic path, but he found this body was slowing him down, uh, seeking pleasure, getting disease, getting uh, need rest. So as a yogi himself, he wanted to find many different methods uh, to actually leave his body. So then through his meditation, through his journey into yogic path, he realized in order to see progress or go further in your spiritual journey, a healthy body is the foundation. So then he uh, wrote a chapter called Ashtanga Yoga, Attanga Yoga, where he explains all of the benefits of yoga, how it helps heal the known and unknown ailments in our body. As you, most of you may be from India, I, I see a lot of names, which I believe from uh, who can understand and speak Tamil. You know, we have some of the greatest literatures like Tirukural, Tirumandiram. All these literatures talks about human discipline and how one should be disciplined both in the physical, uh, taking care of the physical body and also how it helps us to be more balanced in our moods and emotions. So let me take, give you another example, Tirukural. Uh, I mean, it sounds very basic. It sounds something that everybody knows, but because it so blatantly, you know, uh, highlights the most fundamental elements of yoga, the yogic lifestyle, people don't realize how important it is, right? So, uh, so Tirukural talks about a lot of yamas and niyamas, which is the, the disciplines as a human being or a person who likes to live a very uh, spiritual disciplined life, how, uh, what are all the disciplines one should follow? And then one of the very common thing, Tirukural, Tirukural, Tirukural uh, highlights is about keeping good in health, physical health. Uh, no matter what type of job we do today, uh, a physical health is the fundamentals. How much money we earn, how much money we save in order to enjoy all this money we save during our young age, a good health is very important. Obviously, you can't go to a medical store and ask for good health. There is no medicine for you to get good health. Good health is a lifestyle that we adapt and a discipline that we set for ourselves and to live in that disciplined lifestyle. And yogis have offered us all of the things that we need to know in order to live a healthy, good life. Especially in the Thirumulas Thirumandiram, he talks about various conditions, diseases in our body, and he classifies all these diseases into three doshas, vata, pitta, and kapha. And uh, according to the ancient Siddha text, there are 4,448 diseases classified under these three categories, vata, pitta, and kapha. Whatever the disease that you are talking about today, you know, already exists in our, these three classifications of vata, pitta, kapha. And then how one can uh, take up some practices like yoga, or natural therapies. Natural therapies means anything that we use the five elements of the earth to heal the ailments in our body. And then simple breathing techniques. In yoga, we call this pranayamas. Pranayama means energy expansion practice, right? And breath is a tool that we can use to expand the prana, the energy in our body. So all these are already given to us by our siddhas, what we need to do is learn to apply this into this modern lifestyle. Obviously, when we refer to very ancient text, we take it as it is. We don't simplify and modify according to our lifestyle. So it sounds too remote to our reality, right? In order to follow yoga, there are many traditional rules and principles, right? Uh, the very traditional rules and eligibilities to practice yoga, for example, right? I remember reading it 
some of the oldest books, right? You should not drink coffee. You should not drink tea. You should not drink alcohol. You should not smoke. Uh, to the very extent that you should not even borrow money. You should not even tell a lie, right? You should not sleep late at night, right? And uh, eat environmentally friendly diet, right? Environmentally, live an environmentally friendly lifestyle. So these are all the disciplines one has to follow in order to start yoga practice, according to the ancient text, right? That's where you come under yama and niyama, which means the, the disciplines one has to follow in order to become a, a better yoga practitioner. But my father, Dr. Asana Andiyapan, he, he actually says, if one, listen, one lives a very disciplined lifestyle, you wake up early in the morning, you don't tell a lie, you don't borrow money, you don't drink, you don't smoke, and you live a very disciplined lifestyle, that's the lifestyle of a yogi, right? So in order to understand how to apply yoga into our lifestyle, we need to first understand, you know, what are all the things that is creating imbalance in our lifestyle, and based on that, make some changes that are more practical to our lifestyle with the current state and environment, then slowly make progress with this as we adapt these principles. Now, I'm sure I don't have to give very philosophical advice about yoga and all the literatures, but I certainly would like to tell you a few uh, you know, events in my life that I myself started yoga at the age of two, and people always ask, how can you teach a two-year-old child yoga? Is it not, uh, you know, how can the body take it? And a lot of people, yoga means bending and twisting your body in many different poses. Uh, for a lot of people, yoga means just sitting still, closing the eyes. For a lot of people, yoga means just singing and chanting mantras. So yoga means many things to a lot of people, right? When we say yoga... A lot of people with different backgrounds, different cultures, different lifestyles will take yoga means this, yoga means that. In the Western culture, yoga means just physical posture. They enjoy doing these asanas, physical postures. They challenge themselves or they actually take yoga asanas as a replacement exercise to their gym routine or any other routine they are doing. And they modify this practice according to their own interest and likes. And they call this yoga, right? In India, everyone knows yoga. If I say what is yoga, I'm sure everyone in this panel knows what is yoga. But how to modify the yoga practice to one's physical and mental state is what you need a teacher, you need an experienced teacher to uh, find out. So my father, who has been studying or practicing yoga from the age of 15, decided to teach a two-year-old child yoga, which is me, right? And immediately a lot of assumptions were thrown at him thinking that you're going to let your child die or he is not going to grow healthy or he's going to become a midget he will he may have issues in his physical and mental health later stage so a lot of people assume, assumed certain things but then his uh, viewpoint is if yoga was practiced by his guru who is like 102 years old Bengal Sundaram he was doing yoga every day in his life. When I say yoga, practicing all the disciplines in yoga, why can't a young children, child can be given these practices according to that child's physical and mental state? Living a yogic lifestyle is already in the practice of yoga. Like I just told you, right? Early morning waking up, living a disciplined life is already the path of yoga. So you don't need to put your leg behind the head to start yoga. So it has nothing to do with your physical ability but in order to have a healthy body, you should know your body has muscles, bones, and joints, which degenerates because of the modern lifestyle that we live in. People who don't have any active lifestyle routine, naturally, the body's circulation, immune system, ability to prevent from common illnesses such as cold and flu, a regular practice of simple asanas can help you to improve your immune system. And apart from that, one of the major issues with people who work in corporate lifestyle is stress. You know, no matter you go to a young child at school, the child is stressed, or someone in the very most senior job, you ask them, that person is stressed. So stress is a common uh, challenge everyone is going through. And I don't have to highlight this pandemic environment. Everyone goes through stress. And everybody wants to de-stress. And the methods of de-stressing today is watching TV, watching YouTube, getting indulged with social media, or things that we used to do something 
as a family gathering or going to temples or whatever the activities that we used to go, even walk in the park has become a rare occasion when compared to today's lifestyle because everyone likes to go on their phone device or television and start watching these episodes or movies to de-stress themselves. But certainly that is not the way to de-stress or that's not the method of calming our body and mind. So just a few minutes of yoga practice is more than enough to take care of one's physical and mental health. So as a child, my father has brought us into this yogic discipline. And as our physical and mental state evolved, he applied whatever the practices that suits the child, right? Uh, you're not going to bend and twist a child for the sake of, you know, getting the child to be more flexible. Children are already flexible. And secondly, you're not going to tell the child to sit and close the eyes and meditate. So that becomes an impractical way of teaching yoga. So what he did was according to my physical and mental state, what elements of yoga can influence my body and mind? Singing. He is a fantastic singer. Singing, chanting. We call it bhakti yoga. So me being around people who sing and chant uh, Tamil songs, Tevaram, Thiruvasakam, Mantras, it's all a divine experience of yoga. A child in that atmosphere is going through a yogic journey. So this is how we should look at yoga. Not yoga means physical exercise. Yoga means a meditation. Yoga means a breathing. Yoga means standing on your head. That is not the way to look at yoga. Our, our yogis have never mentioned how yoga should be. Yoga is a lifestyle. Yoga is a discipline. Almost everyone, we are adapting some principles of yoga in our lifestyle, knowingly or unknowingly. The word yoga means union, the union of body and mind. Any action or any intent we have in our life done with the union of body and mind, we call yoga, yoga in our language, right? So you don't need to particularly refer yoga as one practice. Yoga is a holistic practice that can be adapted to various bodies and mind various age groups, or even people who are, uh, you know, lying on the bed, cannot move their legs and arms, paraplegics, they can also still be taught certain practices in yoga. So uh, my whole family, including my, my father, mother, sister, we were all practicing yoga all through our life. Yoga has been part of my life every single day. And uh, I came to Hong Kong in the year 2003 at the very peak of the SARS. And you may have heard about the SARS uh, you know, it is very similar to Corona in Hong Kong, where people were still wearing masks. Hundreds of people were dying every day. People were afraid to meet each other or, you know, go to public places. So I arrived in Hong Kong at that time where the awareness about practice like yoga was not there. And uh, there was a, a fitness master started a yoga center because there was a lot of talk about yoga because yoga has become a celebrity thing. All the top uh, Hollywood movie stars and uh, you know star music uh, singers, all of these people have been practicing yoga, and it is uh, before the time of social media, before YouTube and Instagram and everything. It's becoming a thing, right? And uh, Hong Kong is an international city. Everyone wants to do whatever is popular in the West. So yoga was popular. So when I came to Hong Kong, the people of Hong Kong obviously were very new to yoga practice. But in Chinese, they have this practice called uh, Tai Chi. The tai Chi is a practice where the, the philosophy, the methods, or even the goals of what we do with these movements, with Qi, with energy. In our tradition, we call them Prana. In Chinese tradition, they call it Qi. They understood how yoga is very similar to Tai Chi. And uh, it is something they welcome. And they enjoy the benefits of yoga as we introduced yoga in the more traditional way not the most modern westernized way, but traditional method applied in the modern setup. Remember that, right? So let me give you an example. I don't know how many of you have heard of uh, hot yoga. Can you, can you raise your thumbs up if you have heard of hot yoga? How many of you have heard of hot yoga? Any response? Can anyone say what is hot yoga? Hot yoga. So let me give you an example, right? Uh, so in the West, we have the aircons in our room. 
So they have these heaters, a coil heaters in their room. They heat up the room to a 35 to 38 degrees heat and they practice yoga inside. So it is similar to us walking out on the street in India and practicing yoga in an outdoor, maybe on your rooftop. That brings certain heat element, which is which brings heat to the body. You sweat, you perspire, and the sweat causes loosening of the joints and muscles. Then you are able to bring your body to extreme movements because of this heat. So in the West, hot yoga became a thing. Everyone was practicing hot yoga, and many people think hot yoga was very popular in India. So I came to Hong Kong. I have no idea what hot yoga is. Because in India, you don't need a heater to practice yoga. So when people come up to me and say, do you teach hot yoga? Can you teach me hot yoga? I have no idea what yoga they are talking about. But then what I understood was countries that are very cold had heaters in their, uh, in their lifestyle setup. You know, like we have aircons in India. They have heaters in their home. They always had the heater on. But the time they want to do yoga because they want to you know, increase their body temperature, they heat up their heaters more and that made them sweat and perspire and get more range of movement while practicing the asanas. So what they did is they were doing the same thing what we did traditionally, adapted and modified to their environment and surrounding. And that became very popular. But, but then that was brought to India. Now, even in India, we have hot yoga, which I don't think is healthy, which is... Uh, you know, beyond moderation because your body is already heating in that Indian setup uh, atmosphere and then you heating up the body further can cause certain damage to the body. So what I'm trying to say is yoga should be modified. Yoga should be simplified according to the physical and mental state of the person. But when I came to Hong Kong, it was a surprise for me. But yoga was named after many things. Like let's say if you did a few yoga postures on the chair, sitting on a chair, they would call this as chair yoga. Let's say you are, you are holding the wall and doing some yoga postures, they will call this wall yoga. Or maybe you, you end up doing yoga in a, with a fit ball. Let's say there are postures you can do with the assistance of some tools or props, they will name the class after or before that uh, word yoga. So there are so many styles and flavors of yoga today, right? So let's say there is aerial yoga, then there is, uh, you know, stroga, then there is beer yoga, wine yoga, which means people like drinking wine. They enjoy doing yoga. They want to do it together, what they enjoy the most. Now, this is the culture and the mindset of the West. But in India, we don't do that because yoga in itself is part of our lifestyle. You don't need to particularly bend and twist the body in a way to call that this is yogic practice. But having said that, having the, the good physical health is the foundation to anything we do in our life. We all have families, we have children, we want to see our grandchildren. That means we want to have a healthy long life, right? So yoga adds quality to your life, right? Long life. So what is yoga then, right? So for today's time, let's say you are a teacher, professor, or you sit in the office, work for six to eight hours, Yoga is something you can do it as part of your daily routine. You don't have to spend hours. So to me, I would say, as I have been teaching yoga to, to some of the top executives in Hong Kong who works for many corporates and banks, they enjoy doing yoga for 15, to 15 minutes to 30 minutes. You don't need to have a, a long practice of uh, yoga practice. Traditionally, that was the case. People say, I did my yoga practice, wake up four o'clock in the morning, I did two hours of yoga practice. And uh, that put off many people, you know, because at 20, two hours in a 24 hours is a, it's a lot of commitment where most people cannot do it. So what has come to now is just targeted practice. Your life is very stressful. You can still practice yoga in 15 minutes to a half an hour, practicing some breathing techniques called pranayama, practicing gentle, simple and uh, stretching techniques that can bring amazing results to your body. So I did a research on yoga for breast cancer patients. So I came to Hong Kong. The government of Hong Kong is very supportive of uh, yoga. They have actually brought yoga into all the hospitals now. And now the patients of the hospitals are given access to yoga therapy classes. And they are going through yoga therapy before their procedure of surgeries, 
which they are recommended to, or post-surgery rehabilitation techniques. They have applied yoga as a process. And uh, I myself have a community, it's called the Andiyapan Yoga Community. It's an NGO that we founded after my father's name. And that community is training volunteers. Who are the volunteers? Like, maybe you come back in 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes, yes. Okay, so who are the volunteers? The volunteers are students of yours. So they come to study yoga with us in our Anahata Yoga Studio. They are certified to teach yoga. They become yoga teachers and they want to train teaching others. So they become volunteers of the NGO where this NGO will reach out to all the common men in the society, such as elderly care centers, government schools, government hospitals, and various other charities where yoga is not available to them. So this NGO will reach out to the community. Now yoga is being given to that common man platform in Hong Kong. Now, my father did that in India. He went to various jails and he taught yoga to the inmates there in the jails. He goes to government hospitals. He teaches yoga to the patients of the government hospitals, government schools. And every weekend we go to one village and we choose that village to give a free yoga awareness camp. We find a public hall in the village and we invite all the people from the village and join a two days yoga camp that we teach them about yoga, benefits of yoga. I was doing that up until I came to Hong Kong in the year 2003. After I arrived Hong Kong, we founded this community and we have been doing similar service in Hong Kong, reaching out to the below average uh, financial income category people. So, and there are a few positives about why yoga, right? Why can't you go to gym, right? Uh, people say, I have a fitness center in my building and I have, I like to run. You do all the exercise that you need, but yoga is both for your body and mind. You don't need really to rely on any equipments. So your body is the only tool. Whatever you want to do with, your body is with you. And wherever you go, you can just spend 10 minutes doing something with your own body, interacting with your body, listening to your body, getting to know your body better every day when you practice these asanas and becoming more aware of your physical and mental state. In today's time, I would request anyone to, you know, in, at any age, you should know your body better. But usually what happens, we go for a medical checkup and then we end up finding out that, you know, uh, we have a back pain or we have conditions that pre-exist in our body that we are not aware of because our lifestyle has become so fast paced, we don't even have time to sit and observe what's going on with our body, right? Uh, constipation is a very common condition that I come across people who live a highly stressful lifestyle. Indigestion, hormonal imbalance, and uh, poor posture. Poor posture leads to poor oxygen absorption, increases stress level, affects sleep quality. When the sleep is not good, then you wake up tired, you wake up grumpy, you, you have so much frustrations in you, you can't carry the day with a good energy, then that frustration adds up to more stress, leading to more hormonal imbalance and leading to some kind of an illness that we have to deal with and spend all the money we ended up saving you know, with those times. So I am now 40 years old. I have been teaching in Hong Kong for the past 20 years and uh, thousands of teachers have been trained under me and they have been certified and they are now the volunteers of our community and they have been reaching out to different charities. And uh, another charity I would like to say is the elderly charities. The two main categories of people neglected in a society are the young children and the elderly. And yoga is perfect for these two categories. The others have access, some means of access. You may go to gym, you are just having some sort of physical work in at home, at office, or something you are doing. Your body is quite mobile and agile. But young children, as they are growing, if their immunity is not developed properly, their muscles, bones, and you know uh, organs are not strengthened with proper physical fitness and exercise, they do have that you know uh, reaction. I mean, the effects of that later stage of their life. So young children should be introduced to practices like yoga. It is very healthy for them, not only for the physical state, but also mental state. The elderly, obviously, they can't go to gym. They can't travel to places to study any other activities. So 
they can just sit at home, practice yoga, sitting on a chair, bed. So this is also possible, right? Now, this is where I just explained before how yoga should be modified or tailor-made according to the individual based on their physical and mental state, right? And now we also teach yoga for drug abusers in Hong Kong, drug, young teenage drug abusers, uh, female in Hong Kong. And it has, uh, what, what are all the benefits they get, right? So basically yoga is an activity that they enjoy, you know, doing it as a community. So you have a group of friends or family members or people of that similar condition meet together to practice yoga. That is a sense of community feeling. They support each other. They motivate each other. The second thing is, of course, when you learn from able guidance, that person or the teacher can give you the signs of positive progress that you are making in this practice. So you are not on your own. So the teacher or the yoga master gives you, okay, now you are improving from the day one from now. This is the progress you have made. All of this gives them some understanding what physical and mental progress you're making while you're regular with the practice. And when you make progress, everyone or most of the people will be motivated to do more, right? When people get bored, why they are frustrated? Because there is no progress made in the process. So when you practice yoga regularly under expert guidance, you understand how to see the progress, which most people don't know. What should I see in yoga? Should I be able to fly on air? walk on water? Should I able to read people's mind? So people think these advanced spiritual benefits as their progress. No, if you can touch your upper back with your palm, that's the progress. A lot of people cannot do it, right? If they cannot do it without a, a stitch in the shoulder or knocking the head forward. So doing the bringing the elbow behind the head is actually a, a good above average range of flexibility, right? Why do you need this? Because as you get older, the shoulder rounds and hunches. And this is where we cannot raise the arms. As the shoulder rounds and hunches, the vertebrae of your spinal column degenerates. And it de degenerates very fast. The muscles of the back is lost. You lose your posture. And it, it just takes one wrong fall where you might fracture a bone or you might end up with an injury. Then you have to be on a, you know, on a surgery or you may have to go through a treatment which can be prevented or avoided by doing simple and gentle practices. So my father was very particular about not mixing yoga and uh, the so-called the spirituality in this practice, right? A lot of people think if you want to become a yoga master or if you want to call yourself a yoga guru, you have to have a long beard, you have to wear orange robes, you have to have some mala, you have to wear a turban, and you have to have people around you, you sitting on a table and chair and everybody should worship you. You don't need to do any of this show. Yoga is your own body's journey, right? You don't need to do it, you know, as a mass session. All you need to do is to just find time, find a teacher who is available to you, right? Don't go and look for a guru who is thousand miles away from you. Find a teacher in your area who is available to you, who can guide you on the initial steps to this path so you feel inspired to this journey. Don't wait for the perfect moment to find the right guru. Those days are not the way to look at yoga practice. Anytime you come across some able, qualified yoga teacher, just start your yoga practice. Just make sure you, you, you tell them your goals. What is your practical application of yoga into your lifestyle? I can do two times a day. I mean, two times a week. I can only do one time a week. So they can give you some realistic expectation of the outcome, what these practices can bring. And based on that, you are able to give slow, steady progress with your practice. And you will see the amazing changes in your physical and mental health when you practice yoga to a minimum of even once a week. It is possible, right? So to go back to this practice, my father is very particular about not to chant any mantras, Sanskrit mantras in a yoga class. Why? Because you want people of all religion and faith to practice yoga. Yoga is a holistic practice. It should be available to people of all uh, faith and religion. You don't need to bring in a language which is not familiar to them in the initial practice and confuse them even more or have them do certain rituals right, which will not be, you know, so what they want to do in terms of yogi practice. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not against anything, but I'm just telling you, 
in order for your physical and mental state to be in good health, you don't need to sit and uh, chant Sanskrit mantras. It's not necessary in the beginning. But once you go deeper into this practice, you understand why do we chant mantras? What are all the benefits? How it affects the brain, the waves of the brain? And uh, why should we do this chanting? And all these are for a reason. But for a common man who is coming to yoga to relieve a back pain, you don't need to sit and uh, chant mantras for them. So my father is very particular about the practical application of yoga for a person according to the physical and mental state simplify the practice so you don't need to make it too advanced and very complicated too remote to their reality the thing is whenever you see a yoga pose that is too advanced and too remote to reality of that person the natural assumption is oh i should have started young i'm too old now or i should wait for my next life or i should tell the youngsters of today to start yoga because it's too late for me it's never too late so my father he was practicing yoga up until the age of 94 he was practicing yoga until the last day of his life, right? So yoga can be done at any age. It can be simplified. It can be tailor-made according to you. If you let the teacher teach you as per your you know, physical state, do not watch YouTube and practice yoga. The reason is because it's not tailor-made for your body, right? And you need a teacher to make sure you can practice safely without getting injuries. Because sometimes you are doing something which you may think it's easy, but it's not suitable for your body. So you may end up injuring yourself in this process. Now, this is where the doctors will tell you, go walking, do gentle jogging, because yoga is a practice that teacher should have some anatomical knowledge, which is very important in today's teaching, because everyone here may have, or may or may not know that they have some conditions exist in their body. It may be a very minor ache and pain to something that you may have done a surgery in the past and yoga is uh, should be modified for your health. Okay. So in today's time, if you have children at home, please ask them to start yoga. I, I request you to do that because it really helped them grow healthily and this is free lifestyle. I started yoga in my very young age up until my high school. Uh, I never went to doctor, had any medications or I have to go through any kind of, you know, uh, antibiotic uh, treatments for any health issues. But every day is a yoga practice for us. Weekly, two days a week, our diet is raw diet, not cooked. Just two days, fruits, vegetables that is not cooked. Steamed is okay in the beginning. And that can help you to cleanse out the toxins in our body, right? And then the third thing is, Practice if you don't have time, right? There are a few uh, steps that I would like to show you today. You can just practice. It, it is still safe for you to practice by yourself, right? Nothing too extreme. If you wish to join me with this practice, I'm more than happy to guide you with this. But uh, in today's time, we also are moving to this online mode of you know delivering classes. In Nanahata Studio in Hong Kong, we do run online classes. People around the world join our classes and enjoy the benefits. We have classes ranging from very beginner, raw beginner to very advanced, even for teachers, yoga teachers. So we run yoga courses of various topics, how to teach yoga for kids, kids yoga teachers training, how to teach yoga for pregnant women, prenatal yoga teachers training, how to teach meditation or how to introduce someone to the practice of meditation, breathing techniques, in the schools, mindfulness, mindful breathing or all the part of the practices, it should be introduced in the morning time during the assembly session. This will all help them to become more mindful about their physical state, mental state, their life, you know, uh, and the surroundings to them. So uh, in the mindfulness practice, we have a meditation teacher training. We also talk about yoga therapy. Yoga therapy means in order to understand how to do yoga for a certain condition. Let's say you have a scoliosis or a herniated disc in your neck or the lower back. What poses to do, what poses to avoid? This knowledge is given in our yoga therapy teachers training program. Obviously yoga has other topics that people are interested to learn, which includes learning asanas, postures, right? According to the yoga literature, there are 8.4 million postures you know, 84 lakh asanas, right? 
think about 84 lakh asanas. Why do yogis have to invent so many asanas? Why can't they invent 1, 10, 20, 30? They mean, you know, asanas are numberless. It can be modified, tailor-made, simplified according to the individual. I believe that's the message they want to say. If it is 10, people say it's too advanced for me, too easy for me. I'm not according to that level. Whereas when you have plenty of options, then you have some confidence. Okay, I have options. There's plenty of options for me, which I can come in and learn. But please understand, don't start the practice by yourself. You need to have an able guided uh, teacher who to introduce to yoga. But don't worry, wait for a perfect time. Don't wait for the most senior teacher because you may learn once or twice, but after that, that person is not available to you. Don't give your feedbacks, regular updates on your progress, challenges you face through the practice. So better to find a teacher who is accessible to you, right? That's very important in yoga practice. And secondly, don't try to go into the higher level of yoga straight away. Now, whenever I have students or some, when I go to dinners or lunch, some uh, events, people come to me and ask, I want to meditate. So what do I need to do to meditate? This is the common question I get asked because people think meditation should be easy. I just sit down and close my eyes and I should be able to calm my mind and I should be able to see some, see some you know, white light that I should be able to relate to peace and calmness, right? People have this assumption about meditation. And obviously, when they go and sit on the floor, or most people don't realize that, you know, a very traditional classical meditation is done in the Padmasana, lotus pose, right? But people nowadays barely sit on the floor. And uh, doing a pose of cross-legged or, you know, crossing the legs in the Padmasana is an extreme movement for hips, knees, and ankles. And if people have knee pain, those poses are contraindicated. So let's say you are sitting on the floor. How long you can sit? Can you sit for a minute, two minutes, three minutes? After that, your legs will got, start getting numb. You start to feel so uncomfortable that you can't focus on anything. So meditation is an end result of a preparation. So when you do your postures, you are very aware of your body's limitations. You are going to address this one by one. I have tight shoulders. So what asanas can I do? Can I stretch my shoulders? Can I strengthen my shoulders? What movements are giving you pain? How to address that? This is a mindset you have to keep when you practice this asana. And then as you progress with your physical state, your mind is more clear because you know what exactly you should focus on, you know, with less emotional fluctuations. Your mind is in a balanced state, right? So it's not dull or not overexcited. It's more calm and balanced. And by doing these asanas, you are bringing the mind into a calm state and that can take you to that next stage of meditation, right? And uh, to, to give you a simple interpretation to meditation, you don't need to sit down on the floor to meditate. You don't need to sit in the Padmasana to meditate, right? Uh, so there is no particular method of meditation. There are many methods. There are many techniques you can apply in meditation. So of course, in another chance, I would like to share with you more details on this topic. But today I have my son with me. He also started very young. I have two sons. Uh, his name is Sundar, another name is Siddha. So I am married to a, a you know, a Hong Kong citizen. So my son has been practicing yoga from a very young age. And uh, I would like to demonstrate some of the poses that I highly recommend you all can do if you have a back pain. This is a very common condition most people have, stiffness in their back. Uh, because of long time sitting, long time standing, people have this achy back that you can work on relieving that pain. Secondly, two breathing techniques, right? Breathing techniques are very important to keep our mind calm, hormones balanced, to have good sleep quality and better energy level. So these two breathing techniques can bring you some progress that will inspire you to take up yoga practice in your life, right? And I'm not going to give you any lifestyle recommendation until I come across as a person and I'm going to get some more information about your goals and other activities that you do. But overall, a practice of gentle stretching practices, some breathing elements should give you a, a progress in your physical and mental state that you are bound to feel inspired to start yoga in your life, right? Again, you can join me or join us with this practice. 
or you can just sit and observe. Uh, we have few op few ways you can continue to practice with us. Uh, our Hong Kong Anahata Yoga Studio runs online classes every day. We have 15 classes a day, which runs from India time morning 5 o'clock until evening 9 o'clock. So there is always a class every hour. So if you are available in the afternoon, evening, morning, late night, you can always pick a class and join live interactive class like what we do now. We also have a recorded platform, which means all the classes are pre-recorded according to the levels, according to the practice regularity. We put it as filters in the website where you can actually practice at your own timing because we do have students who live in other time zones, may not be able to practice with us live stream. So we have created that platform for them, right? So we also provide free yoga classes through our NGO. So if anyone that you know cannot afford to pay a yoga lesson online, then we provide them free classes, right? It is very important you bring the benefits of yoga to the common man of the society. If one enjoys better health, physical health, they enjoy better mental health. The society balance is better. There is less violence, less you know, frustration in people's life where people can live in a peace and harmony. So we provide all of these. Anahata Studio is a platform that supports all of these uh, platforms. So if you wish to know more details, please visit our website, anahatayoga.com.hk, right? So Sundar, are you ready? Great, please come. Please come. Yes, say hello to everyone, okay. So uh, like I always give my father, you know, whenever he gives a lecture, I'm always there to demonstrate the poses for him. How old are you, Sundar? 11 years old. 11 years old. And uh, he has also been trained with my father in his young age. And uh, he, we also did a yoga demonstration this morning with the Indian consulate in Hong Kong. We had a yoga, a big yoga event in Hong Kong. And uh, I brought my whole family and we did a yoga presentation there with the Indian Consulate General. So again, yoga is a practice that, you know, that should be, you know, brought into places where common people gather and enjoy the, let them know more about the benefits of yoga, right? So are we ready? Now let's just show them a few poses first. I promise them we do some few poses that they can do it themselves. At last, you and I can show a demonstration of uh, how, what benefits you can get when you start yoga from a young age, right? So, I hope you are all able to see us. Can you confirm that you can see us? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Okay, so... Let's say you are experiencing stiffness in the lower back, right? You wake up and your back feels really stiff and tight. Uh, what you should not do, do not bend forward. Bending forward is uh, at risk of hurting your back more, especially if you have a pre-existing weak back muscles or any conditions in your back, it may trigger or make it worse. The postures you can do to relieve that tightness in your back muscle, which can almost instantly make you feel like, okay, now I feel much better, is something safe. Uh, people who are slightly obese and uh, people who have this aching pain in the lower back, see, my legs are apart, right? So instead of doing a forward bend, what you do a movement called a lateral stretch, right? In, sun, in yoga, we have a name for this, partial uttanasana laterally stretching posture, right? So you stand with your legs hip width apart. You first stretch your left hand up, ready? Now what you do is you have to combine that with the breathing. That's the unique point of yoga. You don't just do it like a fitness exercise of fast movements. You have to combine this with the breathing. So when you stretch your left hand up, you inhale. Then as we exhale, arms. Then inhale, exhale. You see how I'm combining this the breathing together with the movement? I'm going to show you again. Inhale and exhale. So 
So when you are holding the pose, remember normal breathing. Inhale, exhale. Okay. Now you must all be thinking, we both bend like a like a noodle, right? You don't feel like, oh, I can't bend that far. So I'm doing yoga almost uh, 38 years and he is doing yoga almost, you know, every single day of his life, more than 10 years. So the perfection of the pose varies as per your regularity of the practice, right? So do not compare your flexibility to others. It is something you are doing to manage your own body's range and limitation. Ready? Now, right hand up and exhale. So when you go sideways, make sure this shoulder is on top of the other shoulder and this hip is directly aligned to this. So don't turn in. So you keep the hips parallel and shoulders parallel. Then inhale, exhale. See how I'm holding the hip? So you hold the hip. Remember, we inhale. And as you exhale, breathe normally. Inhale and exhale. That's it. So this movement should give you some relief in the stiffness you are feeling it in the back, right? And another movement that I would like to recommend is twisting. So instead of doing a forward and backward bend, you can do a twisting. Let me show you how to do the twisting. Tightness in the shoulders, upper back, this pose can be helpful. So watch me first. I put my left palm behind me. My right hand is holding the left elbow like this. This is step one. Then I do step two, twisting to my right side. Then inhale, as I exhale, I arch back gently to the right side. Gently arch to the right. And relax. Okay, now this is combining two movements. I'm actually twisting and then I'm laterally stretching. So two movements combined. We need to realize that uh, most of the time you don't do one movement very well. So combining two movements needs a careful step-by-step -step approach. It's not hard, you just have to do it step-by-step. -step. Now left palm touching the upper back, right hand hold the left elbow, right hand hold the left elbow, then breathe in. As you breathe out, you twist, wait for it, don't rush. Then breathe in, breathe out and arch. Gently arch and stay there with normal breathing. Breathe in and breathe out. Okay, you start to notice this blood moving to different parts of your muscles that you never felt this kind of experience before. Now, there is no discrimination about other sports routine or practice. No other sport stretches these muscles in these fashion. Like in this, every single muscle group in your body is stretched and strengthened when you practice yoga. That is why there are, like I said, 8.4 million postures, right? There is a pose for every muscle, every joint, every system and organs in your body, right? Now, these two postures are very effective. The other ones are, if let's say you are a person who never exercised, right? You are hardly exercising, but you are having hip pain, knee pain, then this is something I highly recommend, right? So every day when you wake up, after a shower, don't do it without showering because your body needs some warmthness, some, you feel refreshed, right? Touch the wall, just swing the left front and back 10 times like this. This will maintain good hip mobility, hip mobility, right? So when you're walking upstairs or down, or if you're suddenly trying to walk fast or run, you don't sprain a muscle because your hip has better mobility and tightness in the hips affects the balance on the knees and ankles. So how much weight you put on the feet and ankles also reflects the alignment of the hips. So this leg swings are very effective. So just front and back. Doesn't have to be a very strong swing just to get the hip muscle stretched in, a, in this practice. Okay, the last pose, right? I don't want to give too many, but the last one, 
we call it the cobra pose bhujangasana lie down on the chair now please do it gently here for them right don't compare anything today I can, like i said these are postures you have to do it regularly to see progress so don't decide the first day oh it's too painful for me too difficult for me so it's same as going to any activity first day first few classes would be challenging right so palms near the chest and all you do is you inhale as you exhale just slowly push your palms and that's it now to me he's already doing it quite deep so you don't need to go that high come down a little bit ah, like this elbows closer raise the chin and that's it this lumbar curve is where our problem begins when you lose this curve right come down please when we are always sitting on the chair and worse crossing the legs when you're sitting on the chair like this you lose this lumbar curve and you you create this tightness in your hips that your back is like this and when the lumbar curve is lost your body leans forward and when the body leans forward the head falls forward and these muscles will get tight and tired it affects your sleep quality it affects your concentration power it also affects your memory power because of nerves passing through the neck is stressed because of this poor posture right so doing this pose called bhujangasana cobra pose one more time you know I me mean? can really help expand your chest it improves your breathing capacity it strengthens your back muscles it also gives a nice stretch to the abdominal organs so your liver pancreas you know all of these organs in your stomach gets a nice stimulation when you do this uh, arch back technique lie down relax now this is the advantage you get starting young but doesn't mean you are going to get less benefits because you start old you just have to be patient and do as much as you can right remember these postures has no limits there are very advanced variations to this simple variation to this now let me show you a simple variation could you please move jeremy i need to show that now the very first time right naturally sometimes people who may have a slightly bigger tummy they may not feel easy to push the palms up so for them the simple approach is this just get the elbows to touch the floor and on so what you do is you don't push up you don't need to do this just elbows down lift your chest and chin and relax right you see how the neck is extended and this will give you a really good circulation to the head so just keep in mind it can be even simplified right it can be even simplified more so in yoga therapy this is what we do right in regular classes the teacher may not focus on simplifying the poses but if the class is called yoga therapy it is done for your physical and uh, you know conditions that you may have which is tailor made for you right so generally in a big group class this is what the problem i'm saying when you go to this mass classes organized by this big you know yoga masters where the, the class has thousands or hundreds of people you gain no benefit you may gain benefits but it's not tailor made for you right but when you do a, a, a school that offers smaller classes or even better one to one you actually progress quickly and you also enjoy the benefits better okay so i don't want to bring too many uh, postures into the practice today and i want to finish with two breathing so first breathing we call this diaphragmatic breathing come closer please now it is you can do as long as there is no food in the stomach so let's say you ate at 1 o'clock you can do it at 3:30 or 4 o'clock let the food digest a bit so you don't want to do it with full stomach right at least 2 and 1/2 hours gap after a meal but other, apart from that you can do any time during the day so palms on the stomach so it's like moving the abdomen like a balloon right as i exhale as i breathe out i pull my abdomen in then as i breathe in i expand my abdomen out right i exhale abdomen draws in inhale exhale inhale 
Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So teach all your students, especially the youngsters of today should learn to be calm, should be able to think rationally, should be able to keep their emotions more balanced. This breathing scientifically has proven this is one of the best breathing to calm your mind and keep your mood balanced, right? And uh, we call this diaphragmatic breathing. It influences these nerves called vagus nerves. This vagus nerve reflex can help to pacify the mind and also helps you to think straight, think clearly. So anytime if you are stressed, feeling very emotional, practice this deep breath. So Sukapurva Pranayama, in the name of this breath, right? The second one, right? Again, you don't need to always, you may have seen people doing this all the time. When you say Pranayama, this is what you see. You don't have to do it. And because you may be asked to wear a mask, that may be even a problem now, right? So arms like this, chest open. So what you do is during the inhalation, we stretch the arms up. During the exhalation, down. do it slowly. Inhale, stretch the arms. Exhale, arms down. Inhale, stretch the arms. Exhale, arms down. Inhale, stretch the arms up. Exhale, arms down. Great. So these two breathings I recommend. Now there are countless number of postures. If you need one-to-one -one session, we have qualified teachers that can offer one-to-one -one session, both in person and online. And uh, again, we have meditation classes, we have breathing classes, we have classes just for people with back pain. We have classes for weight loss, we call it sleeping yoga. So all these are available online. If you would like to practice any of those classes, I can send you more details. But here, Sundar is now going to show you his practice. Now don't try this, but if you have a son, daughter at home, if they start young, they have a healthy body. So he's going to do a, a small demo of his yoga skills what he can do right if you start young go ahead Sundar. Wheel pose, yes. Wheel pose, one leg up. Nice. Slow flexing. Okay. Exhale. Jump up. Balance. Okay. Keeping the body flexible will, obviously your body will bend, it won't break. But all this takes practice, all this takes practice with able guidance. So the yoga masters will guide you or your children to be able to do these postures. And uh, children nowadays have adult-like disease, you know, hypertension, depression, children have issues sleeping, you know, so practicing yoga is a natural way of improving your health and uh, immunity. So Sundar here also plays tennis, uh, swimming. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. The time is also running out. So sorry to overrun this session by five more minutes. I really hope you all found this session useful, inspiring, and giving you some understanding about yoga today, yoga today for the humanity. And uh, if you please, uh, you know, uh, again, if you can't do it, or if you have, you know, less, you know, time or busy, but I highly recommend, please encourage your children, encourage young generations of the future to actually start up yoga. Yoga is a gift uh, for us from our ancient siddhas and gift to the humanity. And uh, we should all be doing it. And you don't have to become a, you know, a advanced, skillful yoga master, but you do it as part of your daily routine, right? Thank you very much. Wanna come? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation. Now it is the time for the question answer session. Uh, participants, you can unmute yourself and uh, if you have any doubt, you can ask directly to Dr. Yoganan. As a same time, you can give your feedback also. Please, anytime. Yes. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, Good evening, sir. It's very excellent session. Uh, only one question from my side. Uh, how to reduce belly fat? Is there any exercise for uh, reducing it? There are so many asanas we can do it for reducing belly fat. Uh, if I have to say yoga is a practice that can help manage, you know, you don't need to have a, I'm, I'm sure when you're saying reducing belly fat, you are referring to, you know, post-pregnancy or generally for, you know, people who have reached, you know, a certain age after pregnancy, they may have this loose fat on their belly. So yoga definitely helps. Now, let me quickly show you two postures. Just in the yoga, we recommend for belly, you know, fat, muscle toning and fat reduction. One is this. Don't try this, but I'm just going to show you what poses we recommend, right? So we do this called Dhanurasana where we slowly roll left and right. Now, if you can't do this, you just kind of bend your knees and do this. Now, this will gently massage your abdominal organs and uh, it helps you to, you know, break down your belly fat by rolling. The other one we recommend is called Uttana Padasana. Just holding the leg, engaging the abdomen, pressing the lower back to the floor. So slowly down, slowly down. This tones up the abdominal muscles. Right? And this posture also helps. So these are also for good for toning the abdominal muscles. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you. Any other participants? Hello, sir. Yes, yes. May yes, Ms. Subhadra. Sir, sir, what is the yogic remedy for schizophrenia disease? Sorry, I didn't get your question. Can you please repeat your question? Schizophrenia disease. What is the yogic technique? Yeah, I mean, yoga-wise, yoga therapy is the answer. In, we have pranayama that can help. Some basic and simple concentration technique we can actually help. Uh, in yoga, we actually also recommend doing half inversions. You know, half inversions are where the blood is moved towards the vital sensory organs in our body, where it helps you to boost the prana, the dormant energies in the body that can help with various, you know, psychological conditions as well. So we do teach yoga for young children with ADHD, autism, and uh, you know uh, Down syndrome with yoga practices with creative way. Of course, when uh, people or with bipolar also can be taught yoga, but again, it can be done one-to-one, -one, something of a very tailor-made session according to the physical and mental condition. A lot of research studies have shown yoga offers very good result for physiological and psychological conditions. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir, please details the website. Thank you. Yes. I can just put 
the website that I was referring to for the online classes. And we do offer both group and private classes online. Uh, let me just uh, put it in that group. I'm not sure I'm allowed to put it in the, okay. So this is the website that offers both online classes and recorded classes. If you want private classes, one-to-one -one session. If you want face-to-face, -face, we have a school in India, Chennai, Ananagar. If you would like to have online also, we can arrange it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other participants? Any other questions? Thank you. Any feedback? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, the session was excellent, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, sir, I want to know whether there is any difference between attending a yoga session physically or, or uh, there is a difference uh, when it uh, when we attend through online, sir. So there are two things you have to keep in mind. If you have a acute condition, a condition that requires teachers hands-on help, where the teacher may have to hold you or adjust you, uh, you know that, of course, face to face is something important. And uh, the another thing is obviously the your time period of going from your place to the center and back to the place, you know, the time to travel, time to organize, trying to, you know, all the scheduling. If it is available for your home in front of the screen, we happen to see so many people who are more regular with the practice. Of course, once a week, you may want to go to the center and have this teacher, you know, check on your practice and give you some guidance. But to keep a daily practice online, so Medium has, uh, has given all the tools that you need. We have been teaching online since 2020, at the very beginning of the COVID. And uh, people from around the world have been doing it regularly. Meditation classes, breathing classes, classes that are very gentle, targeted towards you know, beginners without requiring the teacher's hands-on help. It is safe enough to do it, right? If you are teaching an elderly, or even elderly hospital patients are now taking online classes with us. We have experienced teachers who are skillful in teaching these classes via online learning mode, right? Certainly not everyone is skilled to do that, but we have been doing it for at least, uh, you know, close to two years, which we have known the limitations of online teaching. And we have uh, put some systems in place to make the delivery, delivery of this information best through the online mode. Thank now, you, for sir. example, this is one of our online studio setup. So if you are coming for a private class, one-to-one -one session, we do it here face-to-face, -face, or this is the mode of learning online. Yes. And when you are teaching online, you don't need to be in your home country. You, I can be in Hong Kong. You can be in India to study via online. So that, that barrier of learning from the teacher traveling to the place is taken up. Thank you for your kind information, sir. Any other participants wants to give the feedback? So the website also offers videos in Tamil, in Hindi, in English, in Italian, in Chinese. So we have that platform available to as many as you know, uh, people who speak different languages because in yogic terms, if you learn the local language, if you speak the local language, they understand the movements better, right? So that's something we are working on. I would like, you know, SRM to think about giving access to your students. It really helps for their physical and mental health. Mental health for students is, is the thing for today's need. You know, in Hong Kong, uh, the studies have shown the the depression, anxiety, even suicide rates have gone up due to the pandemic, strict lockdown measures. So we have been doing our very best to bring yoga to students via online and face-to-face -face mode. So see if you can bring these kind of platforms available to your students, it will definitely help them, yes. 
Definitely, sir. We will think about that and we will be in touch with you regarding this. Thank Hello, you, sir. sir. Yes. Yes. Sir, if I want to one on offline yoga teacher, so I how I contact offline face to face, you have to visit our website andiapanyoga.com. This is our school back in India, and they can uh, give you. We have franchisee centers in Chennai where you can actually study face to face in Chennai. For online, our school in Hong Kong gives that platform. Yes. Okay, okay sir. Thank you. I, I'm very happy that I was able to deliver this lecture on this International Yoga Day to SRM. I am deeply connected with my roots back in Tamil Nadu. And uh, I'm, I'm very glad that even with my 20 years of life in Hong Kong, I, still, I feel very privileged and happy to bring this message of yoga back to my home country, to the people, uh, you know, the students and the professors who are teaching the students. So I believe my father's work uh, is getting fulfilled through these kind of events participation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And if there is no more queries from the participants, I would like to request uh, uh, Mrs. Padmapriya to propose a vote of thanks. Ma'am, please. Good evening to one and all present here. It gives immense pleasure to propose vote of thanks in this occasion. Let me start by giving glory to the Almighty God for making this event a successful one. First and foremost, I thank our special guest, Dr. Yoganand Andiyappan, director and founder, Anahata Yoga Studio, Hong Kong, who despite his busy schedule has found time to grace this occasion. And he has explained how to modify our lifestyle through yoga to strengthen our body and mind. Thank you very much, sir, for your valuable session. I also express my heartfelt gratitude to our director, our dean, our vice principals, and our management for their encouragement in organizing this program. I would like to thank our head of the department, Dr. Shakila Satish, for her constant support in smooth conduction of this program. I extend my sense of obligation to all the teaching and non-teaching staffs. Last but not least, I thank all our participants in making this program a grand success. Thank you, one and all. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. And Professor Yoganand, once again, uh, please accept our sincere appreciation for your excellent presentation you have given today on this special occasion of Yoga Day. And we thank you for your valuable contribution and uh, the time you have squeezed out of your busy schedule to be with us. Thank you very much. And uh, once again, I thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf thank of the management and participants, I would like to express my heartiest thank you and gratitude to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Happy International Yoga Day to everyone. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And participants, thank you very much for joining today. And uh, uh, Dr. Yoganand, can I close the meeting? Okay. Thank you, participants. Thank you for joining. Uh, with your kind permission, I would like to close the meeting. Thank you.